We're filming today for the Hamilton College Jazz Archive, and it is a great honor to have Jay McShann with us today, piano player and band leader and interesting figure. Thanks so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. You've done so much in your career, I, I barely know where to start, but what uh, kind of music were you hearing as a child that led you to what you do? Well, I'll tell you what I think really what brought that on. My dad used to work at a furniture store. Back in those days, you remember those old KEH records where they had the dog uh, advertising? Mm -hmm. And they had the, the old horn coming out of the record machine, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, they used to sell those at, at the store where my dad worked, you know. And so sometimes, He'd bring a record player that wasn't no good, you know, and he'd bring it home, you know, and uh, bring it probably always two or three records around, laying around there in the, in the truck or something. So one day I picked up a record and put it on and listened to it, and it was um, Backwater Blues, and um, I think it was... Uh, Mamie, it's either Mamie or Bessie Smith, I don't know which one it was. It was one of them singing. James P. Johnson was backing up on the piano. Mm -hmm. And I heard that. And <laughs> I heard that, that was it. <laughs> That's all I would pick up to play on, you know. During that time, see, yeah, my dad, he liked, he liked to, remember this, the guy that had that tune about Blue Heaven? Out at that time, My Blue Heaven, mm -hmm. Marlon and Me and the Baby Makes Three. My dad would listen to that kind of stuff. Yeah. But when, when I started playing this record so much, well, he, then he, he, he shot me down. He says, well, he says, I don't think you should be playing that in this house. He says, he says I think this, he says, that's the blues, ain't it? He says, well, he said, I don't think you should be playing it. You know, he let me know that he didn't think too much yeah. of it. That was but, considered... But, Mm -hmm. That was considered to be uh, music that was I guess, not yes, long it was in the house. Yes, yes, yeah. It was considered to be offensive, I guess, in uh -huh. some kind of way. But I know that he, I know that he mentioned that to me. Let me know, you know. So I had to tread lightly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think after hearing that, it it, it was just something that 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 uh, uh, that's that's what I like to hear in music something that I like to hear. And that was the first thing that I think that set me, that, that started me to listening, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a piano around the house? Yes, we had a piano around the house. And, um, you know, like back in your high school days, the, Johnny, <coughs> the uh, <coughs> band teacher he was trying to get my folks to get me a horn. But folks was poor back there in those days, you know. I mean, really poor. <laughs> so, I never did get the horn. Mm -hmm. This is so, in Oklahoma? Yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah. So I never did get the horn. After I didn't get the horn, you know, then I started fooling around on the old piano. Did you mostly learn from records then? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. uh, hit, and, hit and miss. Yeah. What do they call it? Hit and miss. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hit most of them. <laughs> what was your, what was the first time you got out to to play with a band? Well, um, some guys was looking for a piano player, something to play a party for them. They was having a party one night. They couldn't find nobody. So finally, one guy told him, "says well, uh, old Mac up there says I don't know how many tunes it." The songs he knows, but uh, I, he said I hear him plunking around on the piano every once in a while. Mm -hmm. So the guys came up there and said, "Man, we gotta have a piano player tonight." They says, and "We can't find nobody, but they said, they said that you play a few tunes." I said, "No, I don't play well enough. I couldn't play for a party." He said, "Well, I'll tell you what you do. He said, you just come on. Don't you worry about nothing." You play for this party, and how many tunes you know? I said, about two tunes. 
He said, play those two tunes over and over till the party's over. <laughs> that was my first gig, you know. <laughs> and they did, they paid me, you know. So that's what I was doing, playing the two tunes over and over. You know, and every... <laughs> this is, this is and all it was right. Miserable. <laughs> it was miserable. But after they gave me that bread, you know, I began to think then. I says, well, I said, well, maybe I better try to play some other tunes. <laughs> and so, it, you know, it, I looked at that money, I says, oh, yeah. <laughs> that set you on the path. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I started. All I right. started then. Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you um, have to do a service, Army service? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, that's really what broke up the big band, you know. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, I got a little ahead of myself there. I want to hear about the, the band before the service. Yeah, yeah. I uh, fooled around and got delinquent, you know. I wanted, What I wanted to do, I figured, I said, well, we're on the road traveling. So I'll either go in when we get back to New York, I'll go in from New York, or either go in from when we get to the coast, West Coast. And um, so... I had written and wrote them and told them that send my papers to New York and I would take my exam there. Mm -hmm. So they missed me. I mi they missed me in New York. Then by the time I got to the West Coast, I wrote them back again and asked them to send them out there. And the papers came about a day or two after I had left the West Coast, coming back <laughs> this way. So they caught up with me in Kansas City, uh. <laughs> and they took me off the bandstand, took Did me off really? to Leavenworth. <laughs> They don't fool around with that, didn't they? No, they didn't fool around. The guy told me, he says, um, he, was, he was real nice at first. We took animation, you know. And we took animation, and he, says, he said, we've got some important business we've got to talk to you. There's two of them. They says, um, he says, uh, so he says, uh, we'd like, we'd appreciate it if you finish everything you got to do so we can get to this business. So, um, you know, I kept fooling around. So they came back to me and says, "Look, says, I'll tell you something. Says we don't we don't want to upset you or nothing, but we've got here these papers we've got. Read these papers. These papers got two red eyes on them. He says that means immediate induction. So, when I read it, I said, they said that means we got to take you back with us tonight to Leavenworth." which is about 30 miles from Kansas City. So I says, um, now what do you have to do? I said, well, I say, I say, I've got to get, try to get somebody in my place to finish the job tonight. But uh, so luckily, George Salisbury, a piano player, was there in the dressing room. So I called George over, so George finished the date that night for me. Mm -hmm. And I went on with them to Leavenworth. And the next morning, when he's, a uh, guy looked at my paper. He says, "You in the army?" He says, <laughs> "He said, welcome." <laughs> Jeez. I wow. said, "I hope you don't mean that." He said, "Yes, I do." He said, "There it is." <laughs> oh, wow! He said, "Immediate induction." <laughs> and this was what year? That was nineteen. I believe that must have been about 1940. It might have been 44, I believe. Uh -huh. 43 or 44. Yeah. And after the service, you ended up in Kansas City? That's right. Yeah. Yes, after the service, came out and went, and went back to Kansas City. What was the musical scene like in Kansas City at that well, time? Well, the day that I got back to Kansas City, Dave Dexter was recording some, was in Kansas City recording uh, uh, some guys, and I got in on that. Who was? Dave Dexter. Oh, okay. And uh, so then after he found out I'd gotten in town, so then he had me to do some things, you know, there at that time. and. Uh, Yeah. When was it that you got to put your own band together? Well, 
I, I, I had lost that book, see. The book that I had at that, that time, or somebody came down to the auditorium the next morning and picked the book up. Yeah. And I never did hear any more about the book. Mm -hmm. So I had to start out with the, try to get another book see. together. <laughs> so that was it. A hit and a run, a hit and a miss. Yeah. No. <laughs> Tell me about um, the first group you had that came to New York. And uh, did they pitch you against uh, a Lucky Millinder's group? Oh, yes. And like I see, at that time, <clears throat> Lucky had quite a band. And uh, when you, uh, Lucky was seemed to be the, but was about the most feared group around there. Uh -huh. And uh, so they had a number one and number two bandstand. And uh, so it was a, what they do, I, I think they start you out on number two, and then if you figure you're pretty good, if they you know, think you're all right, then they let you go to number one, number one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, though, we had a lot of fun with Lucky. Uh, they, um, we used to play a half an hour each, I think it was. We'd play a half an hour each, half an hour. And uh, the first band got there, played an hour. And then that, that that way they got off an hour earlier. The last band played la uh, extra hour, mm -hmm. and uh, so after we started playing, you know how the guys we played a couple of sets. So the cats they get they get real got real antsy. Hey man, when you gonna start getting in the books, you know? When you gonna get in the books? So we decided, well, okay, well maybe we should you know, we're just playing a few stocks and a few little light arrangements, you know. So we started getting in the books and uh, so uh, we had a little place downstairs. We were doing an admission, like when Lucky would be playing, we'd go down there, we could drink and talk. So Lucky was downstairs drinking and talking. So Lucky's band man, he went downstairs. He says, Lucky, you should better come upstairs. He says, I don't know what these guys are doing up here. He says, but he says, he says, I think you better come up here and check it out. Lucky says, man, don't bother, be bothering me about them Western dogs. I don't want to be bothered with them western dogs. <laughs> See, back, back in those days, everything well, west of Chicago, if you west from Chicago on west, it was west, considered west yeah. around New York then. Yeah. Yeah, they considered all that west. You from, if you're from Chicago, you're from the west. And uh, so like, no, I don't want to be bothered with them western dogs. Okay, well, Begin tightening up. Each set began tightening up. So they started tightening up on the next set. And he went back downstairs. He said, Lucky, I tell you, I, I come back again. The guy told me to come down here and tell you, you better get up here and see what's going on. <laughs> so by the time it, Lucky got in there, I guess we'd, they, they was, it was pretty, things was getting in pretty good bloom, you know. Cats is swinging pretty good, and uh, so Lucky came back. So when Lucky come back on the stand, he uh, he had a lot of stuff that was uh, in his books. A lot of it had a lot of salesmanship and stuff like that in it, but it wasn't swinging. You see, so we just kept swinging, and uh, and and the crowd went for the swing, you know. Crowd went for the swing and they had that oh they had a heck of a dance group there around New York called the uh, oh I forget 
and uh, looked like the dance group was just made for us, and we were made for them, uh -huh. and just everything worked so it worked just just perfect. But it was a lot of fun, though. Was Charlie Parker on that particular group? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, the bird was there. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one who wanted to keep, keep he wanted to get in the books so fast. Uh huh. <laughs> he wanted to show him something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> was it shortly after that that you did a radio broadcast with him and uh, opened it up with Cherokee? Oh yes. Yeah. And tell me about that, how that worked. Oh, yeah, the guy called down. He says, can you keep this going a little bit longer? I said, yeah. So we kept it going a little bit longer. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how that happened. Was there a, a difference between the swing from Kansas City and what they were doing in New York? Is it possible to, to tell us about the difference between that? Well, there were some guys around New York that was, uh, you know, certain musicians, they have certain calibers, and they, some guys you find of, of close caliber together, and, and you find some guys that's way out here in West, West Field, you know. <laughs> you find somebody way over here. You know, I mean, you know what I mean? You find it like that. So you, you had a, so you had a quite a, uh, uh, you had a lot of different things going on. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of different fields, we'd say that. Uh, a lot of different musicians and different fields going different directions and uh -huh. so forth, you know. And um, uh, well, New York, I'd say they was blowing different from Western cats, you know, the way we call them Western. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they was blowing a little different around New York. Mm -hmm. They had the Eastern touch and whatnot. And them cats from the West was swinging, I think. I think they were doing more swinging. Because mm -hmm. you see, you take them old Texas players, little Texas tenor players come up from Texas, see. They came up, they came yeah. up from Texas, and uh, <laughs> then you take the. <laughs> uh, uh, Cats come in there, come in the Kansas City from the West Coast, you know. And you had another breed of stuff, the West Coast cats. I mean, cats coming up down from up north. Cats coming from the south, all over, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you got a mixture of, you got a mixture of stuff, see. Right. And then the cats, you hear the cats talk, say, say, man, there's a new cat in town. He's coming here from Texas. I'm coming here from California. Let's go see what it sound like, you know. Cats come in, and, you know, <laughs> they scrutinize you. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of impression was, was Charlie Parker making when he was with your group? Oh, I mean, what kind of he made with the people? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of places I thought people would never ever wake up. A lot of places he never made no impression at all. It was, it, 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 it's, 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 it's Horrible thing, horrible thing to say, but a lot of places he never made, never, never made no impression at all. In some places he made impressions, you know, made good impressions. Mm -hmm. And um, they always, loved, they, they loved Bird there to avoid ball room. They, 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 loved, they loved Bird all, all over New York. They, New York loved him, but it took him so long to decide, well, what are we going to do about him? Uh, what are we going to do with him, you know? Mm -hmm. I said, I figured, I said, he'll never have him. You know, it was you. It's just like this. I can remember when the, now Jimmy Forrest was a great player. He was on that same band. Jimmy Forrest would get up and Bird would be, would play something like Body and Soul, everything there is to play on it. And Jimmy Forrest would get up there. And he, you know, he had the salesmanship going and get up with his salesmanship. Nobody never, never clap or nothing after Bird finished. And then he'd get up there with his silver ship and then tear the house down. <laughs> Things oh, like that. You yeah. begin to wonder. You say, well, what's it coming to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you worked with some great uh, Texas tenors yourself, like Buddy oh, Tate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some great recordings. Yes, Buddy Tate's one of, those, one of, those, one of them great Texas yeah. tenors. When did the, the hits with uh, Walter Brown come? Well, we were going to do, do some records 
And um, so Walter was singing with a group in Kansas City. And I went by there where they was appearing. So I figured, I said, we've got to do some blues. I thought I might do a blues. And I listened to him sing the blues. And I didn't have but a half a dollar. So I went up there and told him, <clears throat> I said, that blues you just got through, I says, sing it again and give me half a dollar. And uh, well, you see, half a dollar went a long way. <laughs> I gave him my last half a dollar. And he did the blues over. And I liked it. So after I liked the blues, I come back and told him, I said, man, listen, I said, I like that blues you did. I said, I tell you, I said, I want to talk some business with you and the first chance you get. I said, but you're going to have to give me half of that half dollar back. I said, because I got to get me a bowl of chili tonight. <laughs> I, said, I said, it was my last half dollar. He said, yeah, man, yeah. He gave me quarter back. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you had to, if you want to get something done, you had, to, you had to get off that bread in the right places, you know. Mm -hmm. The right time is a matter of time. And, you know, <laughs> so he gave me back half of it. And uh, so then we got put a couple of arrangements together. And so when we got ready to record, uh, we took him on with us, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, he started singing with the band. That way that they would be more familiar, you know, with what we was doing in yeah. the, the numbers. <clears throat> and so you had some pretty good records with, with Walter Brown. Yes, 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 we were lucky to have Walter yeah. Brown. And you toured around the country? Sure did. Yeah. What kind of places were you playing at the time? They were well, dance we halls? we were just playing um, dances, you know, like they have like Dances. See, they used to get. Uh, they used to have a lot of, lot of uh, well, a lot, lot, lot of parts of the states was at that time were hungry, hungry for bands, hungry for music, hungry for hearing something different, you know. And uh, so, quite natural. A lot of bands, road bands, was traveling, and so that made it nice for road bands. You know? So that's the reason we didn't have no problem booking us, you know, when they book us. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, man, we're going to Texas. See. All the cats like that, you know, they, yeah. Texas, Louisiana women, you know. <laughs> they talk about cats, talk about, yeah, man, they got some crazy babes down there in Louisiana <laughs> <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah, we're going to Texas. See, and, they, and, and, and people turn out, they were good, good dance towns all down. And you could get into Texas and play, play Texas for two weeks, you know, because you had all those towns, you know, all those dance towns, see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Started Dallas, Fort Worth, Dallas Saturday night, Fort Worth Sunday night, uh, Austin Wednesday, Houston Thursday, Galveston Friday, you know, and just town after town like that, and that's the way they could book them, you know. Mm -hmm. So that made bookings pretty nice, and so when we that kept things going, and then, yeah. and then, and then these bookers, got, the guy doing his bookings, got together. It would bring a lot of bands down to, uh, all through, you know. They'd bring bands through maybe for about 30 days, 30 or 40 days. Yeah. Were you playing for segregated audiences yes. at that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In some places we played maybe whites on this side and blacks on that side, you know. How'd they keep them apart? Mm -hmm. How did they keep them apart? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> they might have a rope coming down. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> My goodness. And Jimmy Witherspoon came on board a little bit later. Yes, yes, Spoon came on board later. Yeah, and we had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, Spoon wanted, Spoon wanted to sing the blues. Yeah, he wanted to sing the blues. Mm -hmm. You had a big hand in his first uh, 
recordings, right? Ain't nobody's business. Yes, and, yeah. yes. Yes, that was that was a big tune. Yeah. Yes. Did did the uh, the tune Hootie Blues did that come before your nickname or was that after your nickname? That was after nickname. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, see. Yeah, um, a lot of guys, you know, <clears throat> well, when I first came to Kansas City, you know, you're getting around meeting the musicians and all the cats. So I was going down to some different clubs and meet them. And he says, hey, bartender says, we got a new cat here in town. Why don't you fix him up with one of your specials? The old bartender knows what to do. <laughs> he threw that stuff, you know, that during that time they had a beer they called Three Two Beer. And what they do with that beer, they pour some of it in the glass and, and put a tight touch of that alcohol in there. I guess it was that. Yeah, alcohol. Man, it may taste good and it'll be cold, so cold that frost would be on the glass. And I couldn't turn that down. <laughs> <laughs> so the cat, I fix him, fix him one more. Are you about ready to blow, man? I said, yeah. Fix him one more, bartender. Bartender fix that second one. <laughs> Then I get up to go get over to the piano. I can't get out of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so when they refer to me, they said, man, you remember that cat that came out of here last night to come to sit in below? Oh, you mean to talk about the cat that came in and got hoot, got hooted? Yeah, yeah, old hooted, yeah. He came in here last night, said he's from somewhere down there, you know, just come in town, got in, come in here and got hooted. Sit up here and bartender fix a couple of them good ones for him, and he got who did couldn't get to the piano. <laughs> <laughs> so that started it, and that was it, and it, it stayed who did. Yeah. I can't bet see you, hey, who did? I bet you had to play in some bad pianos over the years. Oh, we've had some awful pianos. I know I used to, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'd get to the pianos, and pianos be so bad, I'd get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd get full of that mess, you know. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, no, we ain't gonna have no piano tonight. I said, I said, Brown, you, you can't, I said, ain't gonna be no piano tonight. You gonna have to sing with the horns. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, and some of the pianos, you know, you'd have to tune, tune, like we used to tune up with A. Sometimes you might be tuning up with C above A. Uh, maybe F below A, you know. Now that's how far they were out of tune, oh, some of them. Man. And, uh, and then a lot of times, if the band was playing in A flat, I'd probably be playing in B flat or B natural. So then that, that meant that I was gonna get a drunk on that night. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I had lying. my excuse. <laughs> I had my excuse already yep. made out. Yep. I'd get full of that mess, cut out, and go 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 back to the hotel by eleven o'clock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> were you in uh, Were you in Count Basie in uh, Kansas oh, yes. City about the same time? Well, I came in uh, right after Basie left and went uh -huh. east. Yeah. You and the Count were were kind of compatriots in the same the same kind of music. Yes, well, um, she is a white fellow there. He played piano too, named Walter Bales in Kansas City. And Walt, Walt liked to play for himself, you know. And he'd listen to piano. And he'd get together. And he'd rent a uh, rent a piano room. And he went sometimes he rented when he and Basie they'd get together. And he rented a room for two pianos in it. And then after I came to Kansas City, they would get three pianos of it. Basie could be coming through on the tour. He said, Bill will be in town. He says, uh, so get ready, I'm gonna rent the three pianos in the room down there at Jenkins. So we'd go down there, we'd have three pianos. And we'd just have a ball, all the three of us. And uh that's how I met Basie. And uh, they, he and Walter Bales, they were very good friends. They'd been friends. Basie used to come out to his house and play, you know, mm -hmm. play the piano. 
Did you ever have occasion to play with uh, Jimmy Rushing or Joe Williams? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> I used to get a kick out of Rush. Rush would... <clears throat> It'd be a little stand like this if you got to go up on. And Rush would be just worried to death. Oh, I can't get up there. No, no, no. I can't stand no heights. I can't stand no heights. And come on here. Hold me now. Hold on to me now. Don't turn me loose. You know, we'd get him up there on the bandstand. The bandstand we'd get him up on would be this high or higher. And as soon as Rush get up there and start listening to all that music and everything, Rush would be dancing all over that stand, and the stand was just small stands. And, and I says, now, he said he didn't like heights. How did he do them? I said, what's he going to do when he looked down and see what he's said? <laughs> <laughs> I used to get the biggest kick out of that. And Rush would be just moving about, you know, yeah. doing his thing. And he never even give it a thought when he started playing, you know, singing or yeah. anything. Now, he didn't give it a thought. He'd go, go up and down the steps, and just as good, and go all about his business. And then the very minute when he quit singing on the bandstand, he'd sit down, and a few minutes passed. He'd go to get up. No, he sit back down. <laughs> he moved pretty good for a man his size. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he could move. Yeah. What was it like doing the, uh, the films? You did the Hootie Blues and, and Oh, Last yes, the we, uh, well, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of people came up then. And, and, Got full of that mess, you know, they had a little too much, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Joe Turner, <laughs> every night, uh, the guy that was doing the film, Bruce Ricker, Bruce was sent home, sent Joe home with the uh, uh, fifth, fifth of scotch, and another fifth to wake up on. And then he'd give him, he'd get him a slab of ribs you know, and get him two slabs of ribs. One slab is to eat that night, and then, and if he didn't finish that, he'd wake up next, during the night and eat the rest of it. And then wake up with a slab, <laughs> a fifth and a slab of ribs. <laughs> wake up with it. Wow. So then he, Bruce asked Joe, Joe, did you, did, did you get your wake up? Did you get your wake up taste? Yeah, I got my wake up taste. What about your ribs? Yeah, yeah, they were, ribs is fine. You know, they don't, <laughs> <laughs> and it was very funny. Doing the, the, the snow was on the ground during that time. They'd go to take Jill home, go to drive him home to Total. And you know, Jill was weighing about 350 pounds. And the two smallest guys there was the two guys that they sent to take him home. <laughs> <laughs> so they. They just, if they decided to stop anyway, they decided to stop somewhere one night. And Joe got out of the car, and they couldn't get him back in and <laughs> fell, slipped and fell on the ice. And they couldn't get him back in the car because they couldn't get him up. These little skinny guys, Joe, 350. <laughs> and he's full of them ribs and booze. Oh, man. Oh, they had a time trying to get him in the car. But you just have a good time. He just, he says, just tell everybody, I'm just going along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> and The Last of the Blue Devils, that was a great little film. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What's in the, uh, what's in store for you in the future from here? Well, I don't know, uh, I guess. Uh, we just roll with the punches, whatever yeah. happens, you know. Yes. I guess that's, I guess that's about the best way I can explain it, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you reunited with, with, with Spoon. Oh, yes, and, yes, And the yes. Fiddler. Yes, it's old times. Yeah. You've had a marvelous career, and it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. It's a pleasure, yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah. Do you sometimes see reissues come out of records that, that you've forgotten you made? Yes, that is true, yes. Uh, a, lot of, we, a lot of times, like you said, we've made stuff and we've forgotten about it. Yes, that is true. What's on the 
what's on the agenda for tonight? What well, we're gonna do the blues tonight? Let's see. I think we got right, we got Spoon there. And we got uh, Blas Johnson. You know, Blas Johnson can play have anything. It don't make no difference what it is. He can play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I wish I had a feel like that, you know. Well, you know, your yeah, class can adapt to it. It doesn't make any difference. It can be a swing tune. It can be a mm -hmm. pop tune. It can be a ballad. Yeah. Just, he's, he's just ready for it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on behalf of Hamilton College, I want to thank you again for joining us. And it's well, I want to say thank pleasure. you, too, and it's been a pleasure.